Welcome back to the lecture series in bioenergetics of light processes. So, in the last class, we talked about the photosystems and uh, first time I introduced how at what redox potential water molecule is sitting and the electron which is ejected by the water molecule is being accept, accepted by a molecule which is even sitting at a much more higher redox potential in terms of with respect to 0.8 which is for the water right which is we represent by z if you go into the slide you will observe it so this is the molecule which is involved so if you see if you map it you will see it is sitting at a possibly maybe you know 0 0.1.0 or something like that okay some somewhere out here and p60 is p680 which is sitting even at a slightly lower redox potential or slightly higher redox potential in terms of the numbers if you look at it only maybe 1.2 or something like that okay so from here there is an electron which is traveling all the way up so before i start today's lecture just uh, put it down so today we are starting our lecture 18 okay which is week Four, lecture three, W four, L three. Okay, so this is what we are going to deal today. And the last lecture where I forgot to mention, which was our previous lecture, which was our lecture seventeen, where we talked about the red drop. Okay, which was week four, lecture two. 17 W4L2, where you talked about it. Okay, now coming back to <coughs> out here. So, so water molecule which is being entrapped in the manganese cluster, and the manganese cluster then donate from the manganese cluster, the water getting split up and the oxygen is being evolved and that leads to a proton gradient and electron is being funneled to P680 which is the photosystem 1, photosystem 2 sorry, photosystem 2 to bring back that chlorophyll molecule which is devoid of that electron and that electron on the contrary which is being ejected out now transfer its uh, electron to one of the first donor in the field which is sitting out here which is called pheophytin pH the electron hops like this okay from pheophytin you have the next redox potential where it is going is 0.4 which is QA which is so here as soon as you see this so technically the QA has a higher power to accept an electron, but there is something very interesting. Spatially, in terms of space, pheophytin is much more close to P680. So physically, if you, if I go back uh, to the very first uh, lecture, so the electrons or the electron acceptors are arranged in a spatial location like this. So when the electron is hopping, it is hopping like this. So, if the position changes, the electron can directly move, if some way or other the position changes, can directly move from P680 to QA, okay? quinone, these are all the quinone molecules, then the next quinone is sitting at around a little less than 2, which is out here, the electron coming to quinone B. Okay. From quinone B, it is sent to QH2, okay, the electron is now hopping and that QH2 is sitting at close to 0 almost somewhere out here, QH2. From QH2, it moves to something called cytochrome BF complex, 
where the electron is being funneled cytochrome BF complex okay from cytochrome so this is another site where we have a proton gradient so you saw a proton gradient site at water splitting cluster so here is another proton gradient site and we'll talk later about it what is this proton gradient site is doing from here the electron shifts to at point 0.4 there is something called pc plastocyanin where the electron hops so if you see from plastocyanin and just close to plastocyanin is sitting p700 now this is is the location of your so this is where we are drawing the line between photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 so this is where you have the photosystem 2 and here you have photosystem 1 so now the electron has reached for system 700 now interesting now this is the point i want to make i told you the electron ejected it reaches minus 0 0.8 redox potential now at p700 there is an electron which is ejected out because when the light falls here so light has fall i showed you it has fall oh, sorry light has fall here so now from here the electron which is ejected reaches all the way to one between 1.2 and 1.3 somewhere out here here is where the electron reached okay and this chlorophyll which get excited is brought back to its ground state by the electron which has hopped here. Now, while observing this, try to realize a very interesting phenomena what biology is doing. We always talk about the speed of electron transfer governs how fast the signal can be transmitted from one spot to another. Interestingly, here as if it looks like biological system does it in a very different way it slows down the electron transfer because when the electron is hopping like this if you think of it for a minute if it is hopping like this hopping like this hopping like this hopping like this so on the x axis what is increasing is the time but what is the utility of this time why this process biology does in a very different way than a normal information transfer did it ever wander did it ever strike you possibly during that process say for example i say that you know i have a say for example i have a battery okay and this battery is getting charged and getting discharged so how do you want the battery to get discharged it can get discharged like this it can get discharged like this it can get discharged over a period of time like this or it can take longer time okay so biology is almost like if if this is my charging curve this is the side which is showing the charging time so i want the discharging time to be longer exactly something like this analogy biology is following as if it's chloroplast is like a battery charge of the electron and electron is slowly coming down and while it is doing so across the membrane so if you remember the chloroplast membranes you remember this is how i was drawing the thylakoid membrane now i am introducing a very interesting thing across the membrane it is generating a kind of a polarity something like this do not worry about the sign which side i am pu putting positive or negative it doesn't matter that is irrespective of it but while the voltage is dropping like this so here as if if i had to put a voltage graph so the voltage is dropping like this and while the voltage is dropping like this across this membrane it maintains a potential 
gradient maintains a potential gradient and this potential gradient is what we were talking about in out here as proton gradient. This proton gradient of what I am trying to bring an analogy of a battery or a cell or something like that is the one which is the governing force for synthesis of the biggest energy rich molecule which biology is being utilizing in the current stage of evolution called ATP, a weak reductant and a weak oxidant adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate is governed by proton gradient and we will talk about it, how this is being postulated based on the chemi-osmotic hypothesis, which is essentially will be our next class some of the concluding class will talk about the chemiosmotic hypothesis. So, what is important for you to appreciate out here that biology buys time, unlike a straightforward transfer, it does not do it like that, it does it in a very interesting way, but it has its own significance and the significance is out here. So, you realize so it created a proton gradient here, it created a proton gradient here. And there is another place where it will create a proton gradient. So, we have reached this far where from photosystem 1, now the chlorophyll is being brought back, but what is the fate of that electron? Interestingly, that electron will donate through series of uh, customers and eventually it will reach to the strongest reductant which is sitting, which is NADPH, NADP which is become NADPH, NADP plus. So, so this journey from, I will redo this journey from minus 0 0.6 and 1.3 volt, minus 1.3 volt. So, I will do it in another graph now. Okay, what is happening to that? This is in continuation with what I have already done. So, for system 1 out here, it is sitting at around 1.3 minus 1.3 volt of redox potential, redox spot. Okay. So, out here you have minus 1.2, 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.6 and uh, so, the electron reaches at 1.3 from here from P 70 electron, this electron transfer it to acceptor called A 0. From A 0, it is transmitted and these are all mostly A 0, A 1 are acceptor of electron from P 700 and from A 0, it is moved to A 1 and one second, let me just mark it 0.4 minus 0 0.4, where essentially your NADPH is sitting. Okay. A1 from A1 it goes to Fx. Now is what is very important for you to realize, which will take you back to the very first lecture NADP plus plus proton gradient. Now, if you look at these compounds, these are all iron sulfur clusters embedded on proteins and this is precisely is the reason. So, these are the different electron acceptors which are iron sulfur centers. Then you have FP as the flavoproteins, you have ferrodoxin, NADP plus reductase and series of them. It is not important that you know all the names. What is important is FP is your essentially your 
F x is your iron sulfur center, F p is the flavoprotein. Once again, this this line I can okay, which is the flavoprotein, and uh, <coughs> these are the ones which are involved in hop making the electron hop and reach the NADP. So, what I wanted to highlight here is as the electron hops through they are at, at three different location a proton gradient is formed as electron flow through cytochrome B f from photosystem 2 to 1. So, there are three locations of proton gradient out here one gradient and if I go back on the second place spot proton gradient, third spot where you have proton gradient. So, these are the three spots where proton gradient is being created and photosystem 1 generates NADPH by forming reduced ferrodoxin which is a powerful reductant. So, that brings us to this concept a very powerful reductant which is formed here and a strong oxidant which is coming from photosystem 2. So, photosystem 2 is involved in producing a strong oxidant, photosystem 1 is involved in producing a strong reductant and both this system generates at three different spots known proton gradient which is involved in the synthesis of ATP. So, now if you see this whole thing in one spectrum, then you will see that the whole energetics kind of clubs down here. Here is your energy rich molecule called ATP synthesized via proton gradient. Okay. So, these are some of the most fundamental bioenergetic reactions which dictates the evolving life on the floor of earth. So, if any of these one can mimic, now if you talk about the manganese cluster, this is one beautiful situation where if you look at the cluster that the way it looks like, it is something like a manganese, let me just give you a bit of overview, manganese ion plays a key role in extracting electron from water. So, manganese ions plays a key role in extracting electron from water. In other word, they are water splitting, they are splitting the water molecule and while splitting the water molecule, the way it works, manganese stays at different oxidation state as you know from oxidation state 2 to 6 manganese can stay in different oxidation state and at different oxidation state it maintain itself at different oxidation state and in that process it generates a certain amount of force which is still till this date it is not known. So, here is the water is entering the manganese cluster and at different stage it rolls through and ejects the electrons which here is oxygen coming out and here is the proton which is coming out which can become H 2 of course, but it can also be used for creating the proton gradient. So, this is how the charge accumulator model for splitting water by manganese center of for system 2. So, this is basically called the charge accumulator model for water splitting. So, this charge accumulator model for water splitting 
is the sequential withdrawal of four electrons. So, this is what is happening here, sequential withdrawal of four electrons, electron 1, electron 2, electron 3, electron 4. These are the four electrons, sequential withdrawal of four electrons by P680, which is P680 plus, drives the formation of oxygen from two water molecules. Here are the two water molecules which are entering into the cycle, which are getting trapped and four protons are released, which are two protons are released here, one proton is released here, one, two and the third proton is released here. So, in terms of the proton economy, these are the four protons, these are the electrons, okay, and yes, and input you have two water molecules which are entering, and this is the input. So, the way charge accumulator model works is the manganese remains in multiple oxidation state 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 likewise. So, at it is said there are at least 4 manganese atoms sitting in the cluster with different oxidation state and they could change their, it has been designed in such a way they could change their state only one, like in a, they can and, and they can come back to their own state. It can do a flip flop, it is kind of a bistable switch, like from 2 it can go to 1 or it can go to 3, the one standing at 4 can become 3 and 5, the one standing at 5 can become 6 or 4 likewise and it is peculiar, it is not known. I mean the day this whole mechanism will be clear based on high end crystallography or cryo EM electron microscopy, it will be a D day this if one can, but as of now what we know is that 2 water molecules get trapped, 4 protons are being released, 4 electrons are being released and this way the global energetics is being governed and those protons will lead us to what we talked about chemi osmotic hypothesis okay so i'll close in here and in the next class we will move on to the chemi osmotic or the proton gradient thank you